All right, so this is about smart stack. Let's get right into it. So I'm uh, I'm Patrick. I do systems engineering at a company called Get Your Guide in Berlin. I brought two minions here, and uh, we do a website that sells guide services in many countries. Uh, so SmartStack is originally a project that was developed at Airbnb when uh, well, I, I worked there last year, and um, it's uh, it's open source. It's uh, been open source in last November, and uh, we uh, oh sorry, <laughs> am I good there? Great. Even more here. Great. Uh, and uh, I ported it at Get Your Guide to use it too, so I'll talk about this project. Um, so I'm going to explain why we use SmartStack, give you an overview, why we, what the original SmartStack uses Zookeeper, so why it was changed to be using uh, Surf, which is another service registration system, and some examples, and some time from Q&A. And also even installed a little Vagrant machine and I can show you how it actually really works, like live if you have any questions. So there are, the whole premise of that is service discovery. So we all have used some of the methods, maybe all of them, with more or less success. You just start, there's one server, I connect to localhost. Then you start having many services. You maybe use a host file that you change, like, oh, my database master goes to another service or what to another machine. And then it can become slightly more uh, more complex. So you might try and use DNS. Then you realize, oh, you have TTL problems. So it just gets inconsistent. Some servers will go on one side, some on the other. So that really doesn't work. You can uh, use a load balancer, which is super expensive. You, lots of manual configuration is needed, so it's just it's just a real pain. Or uh, another solution, like they use, I think, at Twitter and the whole Twitter Commons library and stuff, is they actually will directly register in Zookeeper, and then it's the app that's uh, the different modules that are aware of connecting onto uh, of of where they're connecting. So SmartStack alleviate this problem. That's, yeah. And uh, so SmartStack is basically a registration service, but instead of having that done in the app or anything else, it, there's a local HA proxy. So you just connect to localhost and it goes back to the rest. And it uses, uh, yeah, here's the, the, th the whole diagram, how it works. I'll explain the, the diagram. So we got, damn, this is not working. Here we go. We got uh, the service two that wants to consume service one. All it knows is a port number, which can even be configured itself through Chef or whatever. It's a static port number. Then uh, it connects a local HA proxy that knows where to consume it. And this is configured like the first service will uh, be probed by Nerve, which is the first daemon, announces it. The other one discovers it and reconfigures the HA proxy. And if anything goes down, imagine box one, there are like dozens of them and maybe dozens on the other side. And uh, it all reconfigures itself on its own. So yeah, Nerve, just the hard part is really to remember the names. Nerve uh, probes the services. And uh, Synapse actually reads the well from the registration and configures the HA proxy and the apps just talk to HA proxy. So back to the diagram, second time. So Nerve probes, Synapse discovers, and it goes through. So uh, the big change we did at Get Your Guide is that the original thing, the original ser uh, system registers the service in uh, Zookeeper. So while the Zookeeper is all nice and stuff, but it requires three or five dedicated servers to get a quorum, it doesn't support properly uh, network splits or uh, well split brain. It's just really hard to manage. Whereas uh, Surf, it's just a little binary. You run it one on each server and there's no master. You just have to know at least one initial server to connect to. So we just put three of them and hopefully at least one of the three will be up. Otherwise, we're in big trouble anyway. And uh, yeah, it's uh, also encrypted, whereas with Zookeeper, you need to, uh, what's well not encrypted, and you need to firewall everything. Um, 
not that we don't, but yeah. And uh, yeah, so that's really all there is. So we just patched uh, the uh, the initial code from Airbnb because that was also open source, and uh, then put it to our own repository. And maybe at some point we'll go back to uh, the master repo. So yeah, so what changed in this one is just the registration service is now surf which means no uh, no centralized thing. And we haven't had we've had that in production for a while. So uh yeah, this stuff it's just two JSON files, one for Nerve, one for um Synapse. We distribute them through Chef, so it's just a little Chef recipe which is also completely open source. And uh it's stable. It's been used all through 2013 at Airbnb. It was open source in November. And uh, since I've been working at Get Your Guide, it was actually just a hack day project. Hey, I'll port that to you, Surf. And uh, well, it's been in production since like two weeks after. So, and we're, we're really happy about it. We had some servers that just random, because we don't use Amazon, we use physical servers. We had some servers that just crashed on the weekend and this and that. And it was like, oh, it crashed, who cares? We'll just reboot it or get a new one or provision it or whatever. And it, there was no problems. And uh, what's written in Ruby, so that makes it really easy. And uh, if anything goes wrong, that's the other nice point. Like, say the your probe scripts don't work properly, or this or that, or anything. It's still just HA proxy, which is uh, very, v like, very reliable. In the last ten years, I don't think it, we've ever seen a single crash of HA proxy. And it does its own health checks in case, like, if we have a split brain network it will actually uh, not try and connect to the wrong stuff, at least what it can't get to. And yeah, so because of uh, HAProxy, we have all the HAProxy status page. I can show you that at the end. Uh, the config file, we can log. The actual logs of uh, the two little daemon daemons are very verbose. And if you want to, you can just turn the logs to debug and see everything. They basically just probe, register and serve, and probe again and cycle. And that's just about it. And yeah, it's super simple. I did two, yeah, it was on Friday afternoons, maybe, yeah, now training, at least a half an hour of beer drinking, so within a couple hours, maybe it was really comfortable. And uh, yeah, I'm not that good. So uh, I'm not not too good at all, actually. But um, yeah, so we it's so so simple. And uh, at Get Your Guide, so here's some examples. At Get Your Guide, we uh, use it to announce our MySQL slaves. We use it for our Elasticsearch servers. We use it, yeah, it's just for anything. And there are even more out of the box examples. For example, we probe uh, the the web servers to the load balancer machines. And then on there we have an Nginx configuration that just connects to localhost. And that way web servers also go in and out through the whole system. And uh, yeah, there's another little patch for cookie for load balancing. And the other one that's even a lot more out of the box is that for memcache servers we don't want to use that proxy because of uh, circular hash and consistent keys, that kind of stuff. We don't want ro round robin. So uh, we actually can read directly the output of surf generates a JSON and we can choose our memcache servers from there. So, uh, yeah, that's about it and I can do lots of demos and Q&A then. So, uh, we're Get Your Guide, we're hiring, including people to help me with this, and also PHP developers, front-end, all that stuff. Uh, all this is open sourced on our uh, Get Your Guide GitHub repo. There's uh, our fork of Nerve, of Synapse. The patch is actually really small, like just a couple, uh, maybe a hundred lines each. And uh, there's a SmartStack demo, which contains a full, full Vagrant file. You just download the, the, the repo, do Vagrant up, you're done. And a handbook that gives lots of examples. Uh, it's originally, it was just supposed to be an internal documentation, but we figured, why not just publish it? And I'm Patrick at Get Your Guide. And that's some for Q&A. Uh, yeah, I've got a microphone here. 
actually have a question, which is how does it scale in a many-to-many -many relationship? Like you have 20 of service one and 50 of service two, and do you then have 50 times a local HA proxy that load balances over all 20 of service one? The answer is yes. Okay, and are there any interferences by having 50 HA proxy instances deciding how to load balance over those 20 services? It's a very good question. So uh, to that, the well, the answer is that uh, the probes, there are actually two sorts of probes. The uh, nerve probes a, a, a full health check because it's only local to the machine, so it can probe something that can run for maybe a whole second or whatever that might do slightly heavy checks and then announces it to, uh, to surf or zookeeper or whatever you choose to use. And uh, whereas the probe of uh, HA proxy can be another URL, just a little slash ping or something, that's it's more of just a, a war connectivity check than real, than real, uh, a real uh, heavy health probe. And it, in my experience, it scales really well to hundreds and hundreds of servers. I meant more like, do you have some kind of adaptive load balancing in HA proxy, like whatever? Load based load balancing, or is it just some dumb round robin oh, load okay. balancing? Or yeah. That's what I meant. Oh, okay. Uh, well, uh, the default thing is uh, to just use round robin. So, yeah, it does mean that you would have identical machines, which, uh, well, originally this is, was developed at Airbnb where all the machines are identical, and we kept the same thing at Get Your Guide to have more or less identical power machines. If you want, you can just set actually any. Uh, any HA proxy configuration you want, which is really nice. So let's zoom in. And I can show you that. Chef, cookbooks, smart stack, attributes. Into, say, yeah, the services. It's big enough. I might even zoom even more. Okay, so here we can basically put any any HA proxy options. So here you see there's mode TCP, timeout, connect, whatever. You can just add uh, the the load balancing mode. So the default is round robin. It can be uh, source IP based. It can be with different algorithms. Source IP is localhost. Very true. So maybe that's to, I don't know, like whichever key. Like in the case of Memcache, we didn't actually, uh, we only used it with the discovery part, and then it was the app that chose. Okay. Um, sorry, next question. Uh, did you mm -hmm. notice any latency increase by adding the HA proxy layer as opposed to direct communication? There's always a small latency with HA proxy. Uh, in what I've measured, the actual impact on performance is less than 0.1%. Like it's never visible, the actual HA proxy CPU usage is always extremely low even with very high throughput, like gigs per second. It stays, it really stays very low. So uh, I haven't seen any real drawbacks. It's, it's slightly, like it can be slightly, maybe a bit confusing sometimes if you have several HA proxies and uh, that might have a slightly different view of the, of the system. But if the network is, uh, is consistent and the configuration is distributed through Chef, it will most likely be consistent. But it's in, in that way, it, it will be best effort, yeah. It's a very nice thing. Uh, can you say to how many nodes this solution scales out? Well, like up to now, thousands yeah. well, up to now, it's been tested to about 700, uh, a bunch uh, maybe 50 services that each had between 10 and 200 nodes. So it's uh, yeah, uh, in thousands. Cool. And yeah, it's, it's completely open source. And I can also show the, uh, the actual status page and the configuration. So I have a very extremely basic configuration. So if, yeah, if any of you know, Chef, I have a first one that has a, uh, in demo it just does install of uh, memcache and uh, MySQL with nothing in them. And I'm announcing through Nerve, the SQL slave and the memcache. 
and then the other server knows about it. So Vagrant SSH. I actually probably already have it here. Whoop. Box one. So here we have only have two members. So the first one has the tag uh, that's uh, smart memcache. I'll put it a bit higher. There we go. Yeah, it has a smart memcache with the IP and port. It announced these two services, and the other one announces this one. And if you look at the actual HA proxy configuration, which is on the other one, I'll have to zoom in too. Um, repo smart stack demo vagrant ssh box 2 by the way surf is written by the same person as uh, who who wrote vagrant it's the same same group same company and here we have our actual ha proxy dot conf that corresponds to this I'll move it around so it's detected have this one these two here and only uh, one has, I think, the memcache. Actually, not at all right now. And... Memcache, yeah, it's supposed to listen. Anyway, so... I did that one, and we can see... Here it is, the status page. So we actually have the service. So I'll, uh, for example, I'll just turn off here the MySQL in box one. So we'll see it go down pretty quick. I think it's three, here we go, it's already gone. And if we reload the page, it's off. And it doesn't actually restart HA proxy if it's deleting something, it just puts it in maintenance state, just uses the uh, HA proxy socket. That way it's even lighter and you can still see it. And, when it can w and if it comes back, I think it's also configured to three probes. Start. Mm, going up. And it's there. Any other questions? Oh, yeah. One more question. Um, you mentioned when you uh, add new service providers, so they will get auto-discovered. Yeah. And uh, do you also do auto disk covering? So when you just throw away virtual machines, for example, you want to remove them also from the HA proxy file? They, yeah, th they effectively disappear. Uh, serve detects when a, when a member is out, and as a result, it will go out. F initially, it goes, just goes in maintenance, but if you ever add anything, it will do a full restart of HA proxy. So the config file is also rewritten, and I can actually demonstrate that. So here we have box one, box two. I'll just do SV stop surf. So now it's actually stopped. Yeah, sorry, I'm the wrong window. And now if on, I did it on, yeah, box one. So if on box two, now if I do surf members, it's counted as failed. I also have a JSON file that contains exactly this, uh, the, the same thing. It's parsable. And in HA proxy, we see in the config it went away. And also, it's in maintenance here. So that's because I, like if I turn on the machine. But if I actually restart HA proxy for any reason, it will completely disappear, which is done every now and then. Here you go. And yeah, so it's some you add a node because you, uh, yeah, you can put, like you, uh, if a node goes away, you can do maintenance. If you're adding a node, you can't, so you have to restart it, which is seamless, but yeah. And yeah, so here, if I actually re-add it, it will restart it effectively. We can see here, uptime is, yeah, 23 seconds. If I do here, now if I restart my surf daemon, uh, it takes about five seconds to start because I do a default Amazon probe in case we're on Amazon to get the local IP address, which is not the same one as the public IP address. 
Oh, here we go. And it appeared, and we see it's effectively started only yeah nine seconds ago, so it did do a restart. Any other questions? Thank you. Oh, no, I'm not. I thought it was attached by a cable. It's weird. <laughs> Any other questions? So surf is running on, on each instance, or you have a yes. surf, surf cluster? No, there's no surf cluster. That's the whole beauty of it. It uses a gossip protocol, which is based on work, I think, from Cornell University. And uh, it's uh, written in Go. It's extremely lightweight. I've never seen it go over like 0.1% CPU or whatever. And uh, I've only scaled Surf to a uh, couple hundred machines, but I have no doubt it could scale to a lot more. Okay, so every box has a Surf process yes. running and an HA proxy process running? Yes, and uh, if it announces something, it has Nerve. And if it uh, consumes something, it has Synapse. And I choose what it announces and what it consumes just with the little uh, config file. Sorry, I wanted to put control D and I did uh, command D. Here we go. Yeah, so the box one effectively enables, announces LCS11 memcache. And the other one effectively has both, which is why. Uh, the yeah, right now for this demo, I only installed on the second one, the Synapse part. And do uh, Nerf and Synapse actually probe the the application that you deploy there? Yeah. They so uh, I'll get back to the little drawing. Yeah, it's always the names Nerf and Synapse. I don't know what was chosen like that. It's always a bit confusing, but the the question what they want to ask is: Did you ever ex uh, experience like, I mean, something could go wrong with Nerf and Synapse, right? Mm -hmm. So how yeah. do you how do you detect that uh, this script is not probably working? So from there, outside monitoring, like yeah. the SQL server is up, but some hosts don't see it or, or whatever. Okay. Did you experience this or is it not just... Uh, like yeah, yeah, particularly hosted at Amazon, that will happen to have some split networks, uh, sp well, split brain networks. So, uh, so Nerve does the probe, which can be like whatever you want. You can write it yourself. You can do a TCP probe. You can run the script. You can... Uh, do an HTTP probe. Well, basically, yeah, it's the four probes. And uh, so it can do a big one, like if it's a MySQL slave, it can check that it's actually really active active as a slave, or if how many seconds behind the master, or whatnot. And it announces it. And yeah, the HA proxy will only do like just a TCP probe, or something really simple like that. So uh, if it's uh, split, we accept that it will be maybe slightly inconsistent. Because there are always these, like, you, you, you can have availability, you can have, uh, I think it's like availability, consistency, and uh, I forget what the, and which one? Persistence. And persistence, yes, and you, oh, and you can only have two of them. So in this case, it's uh, persistence and availability. But consistency can be slightly off. Hopefully, it's not going to go too bad. Usually, you can, even if it's like an order and stuff, one call of customer service and you're okay, whereas if it's, down well, it's uh, no order, so you can't even solve them. But yeah, it's it's always a trade-off. Questions? Okay. No. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, now actually.